Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman. Today we're going to be talking about the Ruby standard library. So the standard library is a set of common library functions. Uh, one thing we like to do as programmers is not have to repeat ourselves or hopefully. So if something is very common, uh, a very common thing, um, then we don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. We can just use other people's libraries, and in, in this case, um, some functions have been extracted into common libraries that actually ship with Ruby. In order to make use of these libraries, we can require them. We can use the keyword require. Uh, the reason we have to do this is if we had all of those functions available to us at all time, then our program might be a little bit bloated. Uh, but in this case, we just require what we need and we only use what we need. It also makes the end user know if somebody else takes a look at your program, what libraries you're using, which helps a little bit with documentation. So let's take a look at date. Dates are things that most people are familiar with, and I'm talking about the type of date as in March 30th, not the type of date you go see a dinner in a movie. Typically, dates are can be difficult to work with. Um, you might not know how to, from scratch, uh, talk to your operating system and ask it and say, hey, what day is today? Uh, so it's but that's a relatively common thing. People want to be able to programmatically pull out what date they, it currently is on the system. So luckily for you, there is a date library that is pre-built into Ruby. Uh, if you fire up IRB and just try using it, you try calling uh, date with a capital D, so D-A-T-E dot today, then you are going to get an undefined method on the date class. Uh, it doesn't understand what date.today is. But if we require that uh, standard library, the, the date standard library, so just simply require and then pass it in the string date, then we can put date.today and it will tell you, well, it will tell you what today's date is. Uh, this is very convenient functionality and uh, even better, it, it saves you time. Um, it saves you time, and most people aren't really interested in write, writing their own date libraries. It lets, it lets you focus on what's important to you, which is actually your application. So let's take another a look at another example. So a URI stands for a Universal Resource Identifier. If you've never heard of it, uh, don't worry. Most people in your position haven't, but you've definitely worked with URIs because... A URI is, um, or sorry, a URL is a special type of URI. So typically in programming, especially with web programming, we will be wanting to parse URLs and extract different sections from them. We, we might want to know what our path was, what our, what our host name is. Uh, so we can actually use the built-in URI library to do this for us. Uh, we don't have to have to write it ourselves. So here's just a quick example. You can go into IRB and then quickly require URI, and then we call capital URI dot parse, and then give it a URL. Here we're passing it google.com. From there, we can call dot host on that object, and it will return to us google.com, which is the correct host. Uh, we, there's also a number of other methods that we can call on this object, uh, but this is just, just one example. The primary takeaway from this is requiring standard libraries will let you do more in your programs without having to actually write any more code. Uh, if you Google for Ruby standard library, then you can get a good list of all of the libraries available. Uh, in class, somebody asked, you know, how, how do you know when to use what library? Uh, typically, I actually recommend not focusing on the library, but focusing on your problem. So you might not know to look for the URI library, but if you quickly Google how do I parse a URL in Ruby, um, hopefully you'll find a Stack Overflow post or you know some other type of forum where somebody has asked a very similar question, and uh, they would most likely point you to the URI library or you know maybe in this uh, CGI library. Um, 
typically, uh, that's how I like getting started. And once you're looking at those libraries, once you get a little bit more familiar with them, um, maybe you can start using them without, you know, without having to do that, or you can just go directly to the documentation and, um, and pull out the information that you need. Um, so this is a, another method that we can call using this URI library. So if you parse uri.parse example.com slash foo, we can get the path from that, which is everything after example.com, which in this case is just foo. Um, so as I mentioned, URI has a ton of methods. You can take a look at the documentation for them. Um, the real important takeaway from this is that we have uh, common libraries in the standard standard lib that are uh, ship with Ruby. All right, so that was what all I had to say on standard libraries. Um, the next section is going to be on HTML and ERB, so stick around for those.